you made it back to another tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very proud to present to you the Rockstar Games Red Dead Redemption 2 PlayStation 4 Pro. The only PlayStation 4 model ever to have a window that shows off the motherboard. And I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to do it yourself. Everything that we need to pick up can be picked up at the Auto Store and Hobby Lobby, as well as Radio Shack. At the Auto Store, I buy my paint, which I choose to use Duplicolor. You can use any color you want, but make sure to get a clear coat and a primer and make sure that it is all enamel or all lacquer. I used 400 grit sandpaper, as well as a Dremel, wire cutters, and an X-Acto knife. I also picked up some photo paper from Walmart, 50 sheets for $8, it's a great deal and I live by this stuff, it's great. I also used a soldering iron, some solder, and some of my own wire, as well as Mod Podge, Bondo, and Blue Painter's Tape, and some stencil film from Hobby Lobby. So we'll start off by using our Bondo to fill in our PlayStation logo. We scoop some out here, very easy enough, and then this is actually a two-part thing, so you put the, the gray part down first on whatever you know, surface you can use. And then you put in this red uh, second part to it. And it's very, 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 uh, what's the word? Concentrated, I guess. You A little bit of this goes a very long way. So don't use too much of the red stuff. I believe the instructions on Bondo are very, very clear. We're gonna mix this up and then we're going to apply this on our PlayStation logo and our Sony logo to flatten it out and we're going to replace these logos with our own logos. I'm going to use Red Dead Redemption 2 logo, uh, as well as the Rockstar logo. Now we just want to flatten out as evenly as we possibly can the Bondo here, and make sure that there's a good fill in these logos. Because when we let this dry, we want to make sure that it looks good, that it's a flat and even surface. I'm using that Bondo to fill in the Sony logo on the front, as well as the PlayStation 4 logo on the right side. Right, so it's applied, and now we let this dry for about, oh, 15, 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and make the marks on the back of this PlayStation uh, where I'm going to put my square that I'm going to be cutting out for the window. Uh, I'm marking those at about an inch and a half to two inches in uh, from the outermost edge and then making sure it's all squared up and then I will draw the outline for this cut. And did you miss me? Because I missed you. I know I've been putting out all kinds of other content throughout the summer and spring Earlier in the spring, I did do a Ninja Turtles PlayStation 4, but this is the first PlayStation 4 Pro that I've worked on. And I wanted to bring it kind of close to Red Dead Redemption 2's release date. Uh, I think that would be appropriate. And it's what I did with the Fallout 4 Xbox. A lot of you are here because of that Xbox. And to you, I say thank you so much for joining me today with this tutorial, teaching you how to now cut things. This is the Dremel using the multi-purpose cutting tool. The tool is about $20 and the Dremel is about somewhere around $40 to $60. Make sure it's a corded Dremel. Again, I know I said that earlier, but the emphasis is on corded for God's sakes. You can't be using a cordless one. It just doesn't have the torque and the power. And, uh, effortlessly cutting through this, it's just a simple rectangular square design and not something completely elaborate or anything like that. We don't really need that because what we're going to do with this window is going to be immaculate. And I know it doesn't take much. Sometimes people overthink their cuts. What should I do? I want to do a design. I want to do this. I want to do that. Sometimes you don't have the skill and you're worried about whether or not your project is going to turn out looking okay. Go with a simple square cut, I mean, or circular cut or something like that. You can't go wrong, ladies and gentlemen.
Uh, for the purpose of the video, keeping it timely and quick, as quick as I possibly can, I did speed up the process of cutting the square out. But to you, it looks like I'm doing it very quickly. I assure you, I was taking my time. Uh, and with this, I am going to put a frame on it later, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. The lines just need to be as straight as they can be. But again, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, because we'll cover up any imperfections with the frame at the end of the project. And since I've been working on that, it's allowed my Bondo time to dry, and we're going to flatten out the Bondo using a sandpaper, at least 200 grit. 200 grit sandpaper is uh, very, very rough, and should be able to take care of the Bondo very easily. Once we're finished sanding the entire PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, we're going to move on to painting, which is everyone's favorite part. So to paint, what I do is I always take my paint and set it down in some warm water, and this allows a nice even coat to come out of the can. So we'll let that warm up while we primer our project. Primer doesn't have to go on very thick, quick bursts moving completely left and completely right or completely up and completely down, never stopping uh, in the middle of the project, always allowing even coverage over the whole thing. Now you can see I'm starting on the bottoms of the PlayStation. And then after that's dried, I'm flipping over these pieces and elevating them. And then once again, hitting it with another quick coat of primer on the areas that I did not cover earlier. Don't hate me because I'm wearing a Nike shirt right now. The whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. I'm just saying that hadn't happened at the point where I had filmed this and I'd still wear my Nike shirt anyway because it's a shirt and I would be naked if I wasn't wearing a shirt that's what clothes are to me I don't care what the brand is I don't care what anybody has to say about any of that shit I don't care what Colin Kaepernacker does Colin Pippernicker Colin Papernoof whoever he is he's he's allowed to dream in my opinion okay so lay off me for the Nike shirt Now once we've got this coated well, we're going to allow it 15 minutes of dry time. Primer doesn't take very long. And then we're going to hit it with our first coat of red paint. I'm allowing you to hear what it sounds like as I am painting. So you can base your approach to painting very similarly to the way I'm doing. You can see I'm just putting on just a very, very small amount. And what's cool is that we're going from white to red, which allows you to see exactly how much paint I'm putting on at a time.
And this is a closer view so you can see what one coat looks like up close. And see there's barely any paint on it at all. Just a light misting. And we're going to allow that to dry for 15 minutes. And once it's dried, we're going to hit it with a second coat. This coat being slightly heavier. You want it to look just barely wet by the end of your application of the paint. You can see I'm being very even uh, and not too generous with my paint application. And at this point, I believe I found a small hair or uh, a bit of water that had dripped off of my can. Um, make sure your can's dry. You don't want water dripping all over your project. That's bad news. And again, once we've let that dry for another 15 minutes, we will now apply our third coat. And the third coat goes on the heaviest, but not entirely so heavy that it's like dripping or an overabundance of paint is happening. We don't want that. Instead, what we're going to do is make it to where it looks wet. And that is it, where there's somewhat of a bit of a gloss, not too much. Again, I will allow you to watch how I'm doing it here and base how you take your approach doing it yourself. If you're doing something that's not a PlayStation 4 Pro, or you're just doing a regular PlayStation 4 or something like that, you will notice that I am... It appears that I am really laying the, the, the paint on this. That's really not... It's... I'm, I'm doing it very, very lightly. Um, each coat. There's just a lot of surface area, a lot more surface area with this PlayStation model compared to previous models. So if it seems like I'm really laying the paint on there, I'm not. Uh, I'm being less than generous with my application of paint. I'm doing it very carefully and making sure uh, not to get drips, not to have those kinds of imperfections. And another overhead view, this time of our third coat, and this will help you determine when you have applied enough paint. And we're going to let this dry for 24 hours, because we have to flip it over and make sure to paint the lips and rims uh, that are the bottom and inside of the PlayStation 4.
So now we're gonna go over to Google and look up whatever picture it is that you want to use. I'm using Red Dead Redemption 2 in the theme of this PlayStation 4 Pro. So I put in Red Dead Redemption 2 wallpaper. Wallpaper is a really excellent keyword to use uh, whenever looking up whatever theme it is that you're doing. And I chose this picture here for my water slide decal. I wanted to use something um, very, I don't know, I wanted to use something that looked like all the artwork and the poster and the promos and stuff like that to apply to this PlayStation 4 Pro. And I'm going to apply it by using a water slide decal paper. Uh, I use this to apply all of my graphics and we use white water slide decal paper to make sure that the colors actually stick out on our project. If we use clear water slide decal paper on darker colors, even reds, uh, it doesn't look very bright. So we want to make sure to print that onto, again, a white water slide decal paper. Uh, use scissors to cut it out, and then we make sure to clear coat our image and let that dry for about an hour and a half to two hours before submerging it in the water and then sliding it into position. Try to avoid that. Uh, you want to make sure that your image stays on the surface that you want it to stick to. I always feel very uneasy whenever I lift it off of the surface like I just did. Uh, once it is applied, we then use a damp paper towel or a sponge and we will push out all of the creases and all of the water that is sitting underneath of the image and very very lightly you don't want to rub down deep and hard on it uh, you want to make sure to just kind of very very lightly uh, bat or tap the water away so here I'm using a thicker piece of plastic like a plastic bag and then putting blue painters tape across that and then drawing out some stars now the cool thing about the stars in the image is that I have uh, pulled inspiration from the stars are not perfect so it's very uh, acceptable for you to just freehand draw these stars and then cut them out with scissors and then we're going to apply them to the PlayStation 4 Pro underneath of uh, the outlaw there, the main outlaw. I don't know what the guy's... I can never remember his name. Uh, I do love the game, believe it or not. I really do. I think it's a great game. But it's been a couple years since I played it. I think it was like right around the time or maybe a year or so after it had come out. And I don't even know if that character is the main character from the first game or not. It looks like him. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm using paper here to kind of create another stencil here that I'm going to use to um, put the black down and create our uh, our landmass for the cowboys or the outlaws to be walking on. The overall picture, this is all uh, paint and stencils and then the water slide decal paper. Basically a, a combination of different kinds of techniques that I have taught in previous tutorials and as well as this one um, basically just kind of giving you something new a way to co collaborate or combine all of these different techniques in creating one final awesome product I'm going to lay down some black paint here and I'm going to do it from up above shooting the paint downward onto our PlayStation 4 Pro. <clears throat> Just a little bit of black paint there. And then I'm going to apply the stars that I cut out with the blue painter's tape just a bit ago. And I'm using an X-Acto knife to help me get underneath of the plastic that's kind of acting as the backing to a self-adhesive stencil. Now I'm going to lay down a thicker black paint over the top, again, shooting from the top down, and I'm about 10 to 12 inches away 
on the PlayStation 4 because I don't want the paint to kind of accidentally get underneath of the stencil and kind of blow back onto the graphic or bleed out. Uh, this approach to painting definitely helps when applying stencils. Look at my jorts. I will not commit to jeans and I will not commit to shorts and you can't hold that against me. Again, lay off of, of, of my clothes. I got a cool Top Gun shirt on. I got jorts on and I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable. Remove your stencils and look at what you've created. Look how beautiful that's looking. Now we do still have a couple of more steps to go before this is finished. So in order to make the cowboys stand out a little bit more, I went ahead and laid some more paper over the, uh, over, like kind of halfway down on the graphic and just very lightly laid a bit of red paint here. Enough to where you can see that it is red there, but not enough to where it covers up, you know, the, the decal, the, the, the graphic entirely. It just adds a hue of red to it, which is true to the image that I pulled inspiration from. The purpose of laying the red down was so that the stencils of the cowboys, the shadows of these cowboys or outlaws or whatever they are, so that they will stand out more while up against the graphic of the main character in the background. So I'm using uh, a stencil film here and an X-Acto knife. I created this image of stencils by using a, a program. You don't have to do it, you know, that in depth. I just chose to do it because, I don't know, it was easier. And originally I was going to have a cricket do this cut for me, but I bought the wrong goddamn cricket. The cricket that I bought was way too old and did not support, you know, pr custom images. So I just ended up using the image that I had created for the cricket and cutting it out by hand myself. And this takes, this took me probably about 20, maybe 30 minutes to, to finish. And the further along I got, the easier it got. I found that keeping your blade somewhat steady while moving the graphic around or the stencil around while you cut uh, was a much, much easier way to go about doing it. So now the stencil is ready and I'm going to place it exactly where I want it to go. The transparency of the film paper allows me for perfect placement of these stencils. And again, when applying the stencils, I am keeping the can about 10 to 12 inches away from, uh, from the project and painting downward, like dropping the paint down onto it. This helps again make sure that paint doesn't go places that it shouldn't go. And when we're removing our stencil, we want to pull upward off of the project. And there you have it. Those look fantastically beautiful. Those look, I mean, those look great. I don't even think it would look much better if a cricket had done it. I did that by hand, which means you can do that by hand. Look at the amount of detail on that. I am proud of that stencil. First, time I've ever done a stencil like that. 
very happy to bring it to you. And the middle part looked a little bland to me, so I decided why not give it the black, uh, the black base with the dirty red stars look to match the front of the PlayStation 4 Pro. So just applying a quick black coat to this after laying some stars down. And then I will remove those stars. Once I have removed the stars, I will then hit it with a light dusting of black paint to kind of give those stars that dirty look. So these are the logos. Again, I'm using a water slide decal paper, white water slide decal paper, and I am clear coating them, much as I told you you should do in the first place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of the white off of this to where there's only black, uh, basically like a black uh, rim or ring or frame around the entire uh, logo here. So that way it meshes very well with the black that's going to surround it. And again, letting it sit in our water for about one minute, no longer than a minute and a half. And then we're going to apply it to, uh, to the front here. And this is going to finish up the top and get this thing completely ready for clear coating. Again, avoid lifting the graphic completely off of the project. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video, I am replacing the Sony logo and the PlayStation 4 logo with customized logos. Now it's time to clear coat and following the steps for painting, you will apply your clear coat the same way. Your first coat goes on very, very lightly your second coat goes on slightly darker, and your third coat goes on to where it looks wet. To pull power to our lights, I chose to run a jump straight out of the power block of the PlayStation 4 Pro. There is one Phillips head screwdriver in the center of it, and then we can pull it apart with our hands. It's very easy, uh, it just pops right apart. It also pops right back together. Now we're gonna use this as reference as the top of the power bar and underneath here, this is the bottom part of the power bar and this area here is where you could pull power and negative from the main power supply and then on this area of the board as well power and negative identified from this spot on the top you can see very clearly that it is labeled ground here and on the opposite side would make it the power so 
This area on the back here is where the negative part is that is actually sticking through from that port. We're going to attach our black wire to that, and then we will attach our white wire to the power side. The power side is located right in this area here, and again, just attaching a white wire to that. This will jump power from our power block straight to our LEDs or cold cathode lights as I use. You want to use this part uh, specifically with cold cathodes because if you don't, you'll blow the transformer trying to pull power from the other area of the, of the power bar. So keep that in mind and again, um, if you do choose to use LEDs and you do choose to use that other power port, remember that when you turn off the PlayStation, your lights more than likely will not turn off on their own. Uh, I then was able to drill a hole in the top part of the uh, casing to the power bar to feed my wires through. I ended up not using that hole later and just kind of dragging it out from the back side here and pulling it over this way across uh, and these wires that I'm attaching these are the wires for the cold cathode lights and they connect directly into the back of a transformer but we need to make sure that we're attaching our black to black and red to white to keep the current of negative uh, well the current of power and then the ground of our negative Using a little solder, I connect these cables to each other and then to protect them while they're inside of the case and to keep them from shorting out, I will then cover them with black electrical tape. You can also use like a shrink, uh, like a shrink wrap type of thing that comes with some of these cables and stuff like that, or they also have that at Radio Shack, but if you don't have that, black electrical tape will work just fine. Now it's time to put the middle part back together of this PlayStation 4 Pro, and we're going to start by putting the fan back into place, and then our disk drive. And this is all very self-explanatory. You put the screws back where you took them out earlier, and make sure that you're doing this one step at a time here. Fan first. Always put the fan in first. Your PlayStation isn't going to work if you don't have a fan in there. Uh, don't overlook that. Uh, put your disk drive in and uh, re-secure that with the screws that you removed from it earlier. There are about four to five of them that surround it uh, and keep it locked into this this molding or chassis or whatever you would like to call this part. I call I just call it the middle part of the PlayStation 4. heat sink back into place and screw it down as well. Make sure that your ribbon cables are not uh, obstructed by this chassis here, this, this giant piece of metal. We don't want anything to uh, be hidden later when we actually go to a, um, connect our disk drive to the motherboard. And then set the motherboard into place and then begin attaching the ribbon cables. And make sure to put this X clamp back into place as well as the piece that fits underneath of it using the fatter Phillips head screws. And then we put the protective uh, tray or metal plate over that. Now 
Now I know I am moving rather quickly. I'm speeding up the video again so that way I can keep this a, a, a timely video. But I wanted to show you guys kind of every single step of putting it back together so that way you do have a point of reference. Uh, in the other video where I show you to take it apart, I do not show you how to put it back together, so it's imperative that in these videos, I actually take the time to show you frame by frame uh, how to put it back together. Now you would, at this point, put this casing part back over the top of it if you were to choose to do that, um, but for the purposes of this mod, I chose to leave that off and then go ahead and apply the screws um, that I would have put in there uh, if you look at the chassis, there are little arrows that show you which screws uh, go into which holes. And I am laying that down next to this motherboard so I can see where the screws are actually supposed to go. Uh, it's very helpful putting this thing back together like this, so that way I can, I can map out where my screws actually go. Let's flip over the insides of the PlayStation 4, and we're going to apply the little antennas or little cables that we use that connect to our wireless card. Next goes our power and eject button, and just one long bar. We reapply that. And then we're going to put in the back side of the middle part of the PlayStation 4, uh, the, uh, the ring or the rim or whatever you want to call this. If you'll recall, when you pulled it apart, there were these screws that you had to uh, use to get it off. So we're gonna put those screws back in, and then we carefully work our middle part back into place. It should snap in rather easily. It kind of snaps in and slides back. I'm going to attach our ribbon cables from the motherboard to the little pieces that go inside here that uh, we removed earlier. This is where your power button connects to the motherboard and where your eject button connects to the motherboard. Now we're going to put together our trim using Cowl's Custom Chrome Trim. And you can buy this stuff at AutoZone or Auto Advance, any kind of O'Reilly's, places like that. There's black, there's chrome. There might be other colors out there. I can only find chrome and black at uh, the store that I buy from, but all of the black is shaped like a U and it's meant to kind of go around and hug the cut. And we don't want that because we'll have depth issues with our plexiglass. So we want to make sure to use the flat chrome trim and we're cutting angles at 45 degrees making sure that the angles line up with each other it's what i'm doing here it's not gonna lie it's kind of a tedious process here uh, because the chrome trim likes to like kind of roll around so it helps to flatten that out with your thumb uh, kind of like grab it and then just kind of pull your thumb over the back of it and it should help straighten it out a bit and then we're going to apply our paint just the same as we did when we were painting earlier. You lay down a, a primer first, let it dry for 15 minutes, then lay your first coat of black paint down. I'm attacking it, <laughs> yes, attacking it the same way that I was uh, doing the, the stencil cuts. So about 10 to 12 inches away from it so that way it doesn't blow over. That's what I'm trying to avoid. You hit this a uh, little bit too close it will knock the, the chrome over, the, the, the chrome trim over, and we don't want that. Now that was over a period of, of 45 to 50 minutes that I, I actually painted that, but I just kind of sped it up for you. I had three coats of that paint. 
Now I am measuring out my plexiglass and trying to get the angle on the edge as as close to like the middle part there, the very top left, where the point is. That's kind of like I want those flat edges to be in that area of the cut. And then I mark it with a pencil or a pen. And then I use a ruler or a square, a metal square is what I'm using here. It helps uh, it helps protect my fingers from the death that is the plexiglass cutter that I use to score the plexiglass and then cut my shape perfectly to fit inside of that window. Now I am elevating this up a bit and laying some paint caps underneath of it so that way I can have a surface to work with. Uh, it's going to hold the plexiglass perfectly where the plexi needs to lie within the cut. And I'm going to use that to my advantage so I can apply the, uh, the frame to this. And we're going to make sure to remove the protective film over the plexiglass before we lay down our trim and uh, get this window set. We're using the trim uh, to hold the plexiglass secure to the, uh, to, the, to the actual case. So half on the plexiglass and half on the case. That will basically be what we use for our adhesive because we don't want glue or anything like that. And we can't lay uh, the plexi too far underneath of the cut. I like what I call um, flush mount plexis. I think that's actually kind of the, the term for it. I like to have a flush mount plexi window. Now these are the cold cathode lights. And we have to actually get inside of the tube here uh, because these are too fat to fit inside in between the case and the motherboard of the PlayStation 4. So what I'm doing is I am using a Dremel uh, and a, uh, a stone like grinder and I'm using that to get into the to the tube so I can pull the light out uh, and it won't have this protective covering around it what that's for is to avoid like shattering of the of the glass because this is a, a like a small almost like a halogen light is what this is like those lights that you have in school that hang over over your head it's basically the same thing, only a very, very tiny version of it. And we're going to use these because this will... These are the right size to fit inside in between the motherboard and the top of the case. Whereas LEDs would be too big to do that with. Uh, these are the perfect size. We're going to secure them once we've got them out of those tubes with glue onto the motherboard in this area here right underneath of the protective plate. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to put one on the opposite side of the motherboard as well. Over here next to the ribbon cables where the eject and power button are. We're securing that with hot glue. Yes, that is perfectly fine. No, the motherboard will not get so hot that it melts the hot glue. That is not an issue that you need to worry about. You trust me. I've been doing this for a long time and I know that hot glue is perfectly fine to use. Now I'm taking the cables from this, from these two uh, lights, I've cut them, and I'm feeding them through the grating on the side of the PlayStation 4 Pro. Because this has to come out and connect to a, uh, a separate part, basically a... Um, a conditioner, a power conditioner that we will apply later. Now I'm going to connect the parts that I had um, cut off. I had marked negative with a black marker, so that way I could see which cable went to which side, basically, so that way it would like match up right. And then I had to add an extension to the other one so that way it would reach 
back to the power conditioner that's going to be applied to the back of it. There's no way to get rid of that power conditioner when putting these things together. That gray thing or silver thing there is what I'm talking about. There's, there's no room in the PlayStation for this. This is an imperative part of the lights, so we have to have it connected. Now I've got it all connected, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that the lights work. Looks like they're working just fine. I wanted to add a little bit more style to the window. A way for me to do that was to apply the Rockstar logo inside, and I used photo paper to do that with, and I also used a sheet of polystyrene. We use Mod Podge to uh, basically get the logo to stick to the polystyrene, let that dry for 24 to 38 hours, and then I used this, uh, this thing to cut uh, most of the polystyrene off, leaving me very little to work with when it came down to carving the rest of it out with the scissors and an X-Acto knife. The reason why I applied this logo to the polystyrene is because over time, heat will warp the photo paper. And we don't want that. We want this to be flat and nice looking and not in any danger of corrosion or anything like that. So I applied it to the polystyrene. I then hit it with a clear coat to make sure that the, the photo would, you know, look nice always. And then I flipped the basically the, the picture face down and painted the outer rim red. This took a little bit of time just to make sure that I got this looking exactly perfectly flush or as flush as I could do it. And those smaller details are always achievable while using an X-Acto knife. Just be very careful. Uh, polystyrene is very, very, very sculptable and very easily cut like it's it's meant for that kind of thing you see a lot of people using this in pol uh in in cosplay and things like that so this stuff is meant for crafting and it's meant for this kind of job now i also used a couple of smaller pieces of polystyrene to help elevate uh the logo it's the exact same stuff that i used to back that logo with and I'm going to apply these to the motherboard with hot glue. I'm going to apply them to each other. They're about three deep. And this per created perfect elevation for me to lay the Rockstar logo. Kind of, I put it on a combination of both the uh, that metal plate there, which I'm marking it very, very, very small with a pencil there so I can see where the bottom of this logo is supposed to go. I wanted this to be perfectly centered uh, within the window. In order to do that, I had to put the window over it and look at it and then move that. I took a long time. Finally, I just made a little edge there with my pencil to kind of help me remember where the mark was for this to go. I applied hot glue to the metal plate and then hot glue to those polystyrene pieces and then set it down count to about 30 and this stuff is not going anywhere and it is ready to be put back together finally we're nearing the end of the episode the end of the tutorial on the final application of our bottom part of the of the case we make sure to remove that film off of the uh, off of the plexiglass and then we just pop the case back into place got it all put back together here but we've got these ugly cables and my answer to these ugly cables because this PlayStation 4 is meant to be stood on its end I chose to hot glue those cables uh, to secure them deep inside of this part of the of the PlayStation 4 
just kind of like underneath them in that grating part there at the bottom. There is still plenty of room for the console to breathe. And this thing is done. This is finally done. And I'm proud of this thing, man, guys. Like, for real, like, I've always wanted a PlayStation 4 Pro or a play... I period. I mean, I've always wanted a PlayStation to be able to show off the motherboard, but the way the other ones were built, it wasn't a possible thing to do. Now, with the PlayStation 4 Pro, it is possible. And it is a sharp, sharp-looking console. Probably one of the better ones that I think I've ever done, to be honest with you. I love the way this looks. I love the reds, I love the blacks, and I love the theme of Red Dead Redemption 2. And this is going to a very special friend of mine, who is doing a giveaway, and he and I will be teaming up together doing other giveaways for consoles in the future. He's provided me with an Xbox One X, and uh, I also have an Xbox One S and a Nintendo 3DS XL to work on next. The Xbox One S will be a Fallout 76 and will be the next one that I work on, so keep your eyes open for that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something new, if you like what I do, hit like, comment down below, and consider uh, being a Patreon for me so that I can continue to make these videos for you and also give them away. I love you very much, and I will see you in the next video.